This is the second half of a lecture on cellular aging, um, dealing mostly with telomeres from October 9th, 2020. And the objectives of this lecture are to talk a little bit about what telomeres are, and then also talk about the functions of telomerase and how telomerase helps solve what's known as the end replication problem. Um, and then we'll also talk a little bit about how telomeres are related to aging, as well as age-related phenotypes and disease. So we're going to start by first talking about the end replication problem. And what that really means is there's a problem with how DNA replication works um, in that DNA polymerase can only move in one direction. DNA polymerase has to add new nucleotides to the 3 prime OH or 3 prime hydroxyl end of an existing strand of DNA. Um, it can't make um, pieces of DNA from nothing. It can only add to a 3 prime OH end, right? And so to get around this problem, DNA polymerase um, uses RNA primers, which it then extends during the process of replication, because these RNA primers have the 3' prime OH necessary for DNA polymerase to add nucleotides to and synthesize pieces on the lagging strand from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. And then once those RNA primers are removed, um, DNA synthesis or can fill in kind of those gaps left behind, right? But there's one primer at the extreme 5' prime end of the DNA that is not replicated. Because if DNA polymerase needs to add nucleotides to an existing hydroxyl group, there's nowhere for that primer to attach to for that to happen at this particular part of the DNA. And that would mean that every time you replicate this DNA, that extreme five prime end is not replicated. And therefore the chromosome will end up getting shorter and shorter with every replication. And so you can see that end replication problem happening here, right? So DNA polymerase will add nucleotides to an RNA primer. And again, RNA primer can bind here, and DNA polymerase can add that again. But now, there's nowhere for that RNA primer to bind. And so the end of this DNA never gets replicated. And this could be a problem, right? Because if the chromosome gets shorter with every replication, every time you divide your cells, you get closer and closer to potentially um, losing some really important DNA that codes for genes, right? And so the solution to the end replication problem is this structure called a telomere. And what telomeres are, are just long, non-coding, repetitive DNA sequences at the ends of chromosomes. And so you have a coding sequence that actually encodes the genes, right? And then you have a telomere at the extreme um, three prime end of that, that has all of these repeats that don't code for any proteins. Telomeres can be anywhere between five and 10,000 base pairs long, and you can see them labeled here in green in this image, right? And what telomeres do is they allow a place for an RNA primer to be generated for that final Okazaki fragment, or that final piece of the lagging strand. So that none of the DNA coding sequence is lost. Unfortunately, they can't really get around that same problem of end replication, and that means that some of the telomere is lost every time the DNA is replicated. But what's fortunate about that is the telomere doesn't code for anything, right? And so even if you lose these pieces of DNA, and they get shorter every time the DNA is replicated, you have kind of a buffer zone where um, your genes are not being lost, but rather just your telomeres, or just this kind of non-coding sequence. And so this is just to illustrate how telomeres shorten with every round of replication, right? And ultimately, because telomeres shorten with every round of replication, as you can see here, there's sort of a clock associated with the length of telomeres. And once they reach almost the coding region of that portion of your chromosome, cells will stop dividing because they can no longer replicate the DNA safely and not eat into that coding sequence of genes. And so usually as we age, our telomeres shorten, and then ultimately 
that telomere shortening leads to a cell senescence. And there is a way to maintain telomere length for longer, and that is an enzyme called uh, telomerase, which is the enzyme that exists to replicate telomeres, right? And so what telomerase has are two main parts. It has an RNA template that it uses as a primer, and that template serves for telomere DNA synthesis at the very end of the chromosome. And it has a catalytic domain, which is a reverse transcriptase. And a reverse transcriptase does exactly what it says. It reverses the transcription process. And rather than making DNA into RNA, as we do with transcription, reverse transcriptase can actually catalyze the formation of DNA from RNA templates. And so you can see <coughs> telomerase working here to extend telomere length. It's got an RNA template that it uses to replicate telomeres without the existence of a primer. And so telomerase is there to maintain telomere length in certain cells and kind of get around the problem of replicating telomeres, right, without a primer. And what's important to note is that telomerase activity varies um, between cells, right? And in actually most cases, telomerase is relatively non-active. Um, but you can see here some cell lines, which are um, kind of the cells grown in vitro or in dishes that do have telomerase activity. Um, these are several leukemia lines as well as other types of cancer, and they have rather high telomerase activity. Normal resting lymphocytes compared to these cell lines have very little, almost negligible telomerase activity. And what you can also see is that as these lymphocytes or these normal cells age from 26 to 63 years, telomerase activity declines even more. And so the two main takeaways from this are cancer cell lines and all immortalized cell lines seem to have a very high um, activity of telomerase. And that's because they are dividing in dishes, in some cases indefinitely. And that high telomerase allows them to keep replicating their DNA over and over without telomere shortening. Whereas normal cells have sort of an age limit or division limit where they enter into replicative senescence once they reach it. And the older your cells get, the less active your telomerase is, and that could also contribute to sort of that um, timing of cell senescence. And so germ cells and stem cells both express telomerase in a normal person, human. Most somatic cells don't, right? And that's what leads to senescence. <laughs> and so you can see here the relationship between telomere length and the number of cell divisions. So germ cells or cells that do express telomerase have no change in their telomere length over time, no matter how many times those cells divide, because they have a high activity of telomerase. It's maintaining telomere length, it's replicating them, things are going great. Whereas normal somatic tissues and primary tissues decrease their telomere length with every cell division. And that's because telomerase activity is low or it's absent. And that can lead ultimately to cell senescence, uh, proliferative arrest, and ultimately potentially cell death. And there seems to be in somatic cells a sort of checkpoint for telomeres where they decide that these telomeres are short enough and we are not going to divide anymore. Or we risk um, kind of losing some of the important DNA um, if we replicate again. And this led to the formation of what's known as the mitotic clock theory, right? That telomeres will shorten in somatic cells after every division. And that old cells can sense their short telomeres and then push themselves or promote cell cycle arrest and stop dividing. And that puts this sort of that clock onto mitosis or cell division and is based on the sensing of how long your telomeres are. The shorter the telomeres, the less time you have to continue dividing. Um, what that telomere checkpoint is and what that ultimate kind of threshold for stopping cell division and entering into arrest or senescence is not known.
so that's what this slide is really here to discuss, right, is that the mitotic clock theory, we know it exists, right, but we don't know what that telomere checkpoint is. And there is some proposed mechanism to this, um, to the, to this telomere checkpoint. And the proposed mechanism right now, um, as we understand it, is that there's an involvement of P53, which if you remember from talking about the cell cycle, is a tumor suppressor gene, right? And so the current proposed mechanism of this kind of telomere checkpoint is that a short telomere seems to read the same way as a DNA um, double-stranded break, right? And so this checkpoint senses a short telomere as a strand break, and it basically sends a DNA damage signal triggering this P53 pathway. And so um, DNA damage activates P53, and if um, the cells can read short telomeres as DNA damage, they can also activate P53 in response. And when P53 is activated or phosphorylated, it acts as a transcription factor. And what it does is it promotes expression of a particular protein called P21. And P21 is a cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor. And <coughs> the cyclin-dependent kinase complex is then inhibited by P21 upon activation of P53. And when you inhibit a cyclin CDK complex, you basically stop the cell cycle, right? Because the cell cycle requires these cyclin CDK complexes to move forward. And so by activating P53, expressing P21, you inhibit the cell cycle and cells enter basically into um, cell cycle rest at G1. And ultimately, they don't divide anymore once their telomeres become too short. Um, once again, this is still just a proposed mechanism based mainly on the fact that, that we see a high activation of P53 in cells with short telomeres, right? So old cells have activated P53, old cells have short telomeres. There's a natural um, kind of potential mechanism there, but it hasn't been thoroughly tested enough yet. And I will say that there is a relationship as well between telomeres and age-related diseases as well as aging. So we have observed that a shorter <coughs> telomeres, um, lower the risk of, um, sorry, longer telomeres <laughs> lower the risk of some age-related disorders like cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's, um, and also kind of increase the risk of cancers. Um, and they also seem to kind of lower the risk of other diseases as well, right? And so there's some genetic contributors to longer telomeres, and there's some environmental contributors as well both the genetic and non-genetic causes of lengthening telomeres seem to lower the risk of most um, kind of cardiovascular and neurodegenerative diseases, but increase the risk of cancer. And you can imagine that that might make sense because a longer telomere would mean a longer replicative life for the cell. And the longer a cell lives, the more chances it accumulates mutations um, throughout, those, throughout its lifespan and um, can ultimately develop into cancer, right? So there has to be some kind of balance between um, shortening of telomeres and having your cells actually undergo senescence when they should, but keeping them long enough to lower your risk of these different age-associated diseases. And we've also seen that <coughs> um, decrease in telomere size can increase or decrease immune function. It can increase mortality and lead to these other disorders listed here through both genetic and non-genetic factors. Um, but there is some kind of uh, question as to whether it's the telomere shortening that really causes these issues or whether these issues arise from age and cells that are old also just happen to have short telomeres. And so the causal relationship between telomere length and age-related diseases has not really been established. We do just know that when telomeres are shorter, you know, you see more of these diseases. 
but is that a cause or just a consequence? Is